There's a common misconception among newer players that labbing is reserved for people that take the game very seriously, when in fact, labbing is an activity that's simple, fun, and very rewarding. In this video, I will show you how I go about labbing to get better at Guilty Gear Strive. So what is labbing? Labbing is simply the act of sitting in training mode and practicing combos, block strings, situations, or finding counterplay to stuff that gives you a hard time. This doesn't need to be a strict regimen or take up all of your attention. Most of the time when I'm labbing, I'm watching a YouTube video at the same time, and uh, maybe I'll jot some notes down if I find something cool that I don't want to forget. So when do I use labbing? There are three main situations that make me want to lab. Number one, when I'm picking up a new character. Number two, when I just lost to something and I'm trying to find counterplay for. Or three, when I'm trying to improve or master my character. First, let's talk about how I would go about learning a new character. I'm going to pick Giovanna for this. For the second character, the CPU, you're going to want to pick Soul because Soul has a 3 frame button, a 5 frame button, a good far slash, a low profile move, and a DP. This allows you to test a large, large variety of things without having to swap your CPU character over and over again. So we made it to the training room and the first thing I'm going to do is press start, go down to command list, and take a look at our command normals and special attacks. Looks like we have a 6P, of course, 6P is universal in this game, it's our anti-air, and it looks like we have a 6H, and if we look to the right, it says we can input 6H up to two more times for a follow-up attack. Let's see what these look like. Great. Now let's look at our special moves. Okay, we got a half circle back K, quarter circle forward K, Z motion S, and half circle back S. First thing I want to do is just get the muscle memory down for these things. Make sure that if I'm in a pinch, regardless of what side I'm on, I'm able to use the special move that I want to use. Once I've built some basic muscle memory of how to use my special moves, I'm going to move on over to Dust Loop and check out the frame data on my normals and the special properties of my special moves. So here we are on Giovanna's Dust Loop page and immediately we can see a playstyle tab that shows the pros and cons of the character. Right away I see strong offense, close slash, slow puente, and Trevar are plus on block, allowing you to conditions opponents on block. Great, we now know we have three plus moves. Here's our frame data and our hitboxes. Over here you can press hitbox. Take a look at that. The most important things we want to look at is startup and on block. For this, we're just going to be looking for things that are plus and things that are punishable. Punishable, we'll look at like if it's more than minus seven, then it's punishable. We have our first move that's plus on block, our close slash, very strong initial weight to start pressure. And next, it looks like we're at our special moves. This is going to tell us special properties of our special moves. And uh, we can see that Sepultura is minus four on block. And, oh, okay, giving it solid frame trapping reward from pretty much any button. So this is going to be a hit confirming special move, as well as a frame trap from any button. Next we have Travao, this is a plus move on block. Vulnerable, vulnerable to six Ps. Very spooky one. Also uh, cancels most projectiles while active, that's good to know. Next we have Soul Incentive, we look at the hitbox, we can see that this one is a really great answer because we don't have a hurt box up here at all. Minus 15 on block though, you don't want to end block strings with that. You don't want that thing to be blocked. Next, Soul Puente, another thing that's plus, of course. And we're at our overdrives. Note that if you scroll down far enough, you can see combos. It'll also be at the top, I believe. And boom, we have a bunch of list of combos rated by difficulty, position, who it works on, tension gain and whatnot. And of course, if you guys are looking for anything else, you can go to the hashtag right here and it'll take you to Twitter and you can see people's tech. Now that I understand a little more about my moveset, I'll try to apply it into some basic combos. Nothing insane, just basic things like button to hit confirm, or okay, that hit, so I go into this, or okay, great, I got a hit. I can now convert off RC. Very, very basic stuff. And finally, we'll talk about block strings. Block strings are the most important aspect to focus on when you're learning a new character. This prevents you from autopiloting your pressure building bad habits that could impede your growth. When trying to figure out block strings with your new character, you want to look for frame traps, stagger resets, gapless strings, and basic mix-ups. We can lab these out by pressing start, going over to training settings, then counter attack settings, and go to after block. We'll set the first one for them to press 5P, standing P, 
Second one will have Danun, and third one, you know, actually Standing P will be good for what we have right now. First, we'll look for frame traps. A frame trap is when there's a very small gap, and if the opponent presses the button or tries to jump out, they get hit. There's a frame trap. Oh, a button didn't come out that time, so that was a gapless string, meaning that to get it to frame trap, we need to manually delay. Not a big enough delay, not a big enough delay, still not a big enough delay. There we go. You got to find that manual timing, at least for this character, from that specific button. This process should be repeated, not just for close slash, but of course from 5k, from 2k, from your 2s, from your far s, from your 5h. You want to figure out all of your options from each of these buttons when they're blocked. Once you've figured out what's a frame trap and what's gapless, you want to swap on over to none. And you want to find tricky ways to extend your pressure or mix up your opponent. Giovanna has multiple ways to keep herself plus, including close slash, 236k, and 214s. These are all opportunities to go for strike or throw, and that's Geo's basic mix structure. Once I have a good understanding of how to frame trap or stagger or leave no gaps, I can actually make some pretty decent block strings, even with a new character that I don't have a lot of experience on. So I know I'm plus on close slash, so my main mind game is gonna be close slash in a button or close slash in a grab. From there, let's say I went for my 2S, I can choose to make myself plus again. I can run up and throw, or I can frame trap with a 5H. From the 5H, I have the exact same mind game. I can be plus, I can frame trap, or I can just straight up stagger into throw. Once you have a better understanding of how your kit works, you want to combine it all together and do full block strings. Button, frame trap, frame trap, frame trap, button, button, plus frames, throw. Button, frame trap, plus frames, tick throw. Let's do the exact same thing. Button, frame trap, plus frames, frame trap this time. You want to keep the mind games moving and keep your opponent on their toes. It's very important that while you're doing this, you're building muscle memory for these block strings so you can apply them in a real game. Next, we're going to be talking about finding counterplay. Let me emphasize this. Finding counterplay and executing it in a game to beat somebody is one of the most rewarding things you can do in a fighting game. Note that there is an online training mode. From network, you go to player match, then you go to create your own room, and set normal to training. This is going to help if your friend knows how to play a character and you don't. So instead of you having to learn the block string and actually manually recording everything, you can have them just do it to you in real time. The first counterplay we're going to be labbing is very easy to do, but it's also super, super important, and that is round start. Recently, I've been losing to Maze that have been going for 2S round start, so we're going to find an option to beat it. We're going to press start, go to training settings, go to position reset, round call enabled, go to counter attack settings, scroll all the way down to after position reset and set to what you want to lab. I know that 2P actually beats Dolphin round start, and so I'm going to see if that will account for both options first. Okay, it does look like I get punished. Now let's try a really quick poke. I'll do my far slash. It's 10 frames. Okay, we got counter hit. Let's try using 2S so that way we're actually hitting low. Maybe they low profiled it. Now we got counter hit for that as well. Let's try JD. Maybe we can go right above the hitbox on it. And it turns out JD does actually win to 2S, uh, but it didn't let us confirm it a behemoth. So now I'm gonna try to link it into a far slash. And it works. And just like that, next I'm going against Maze, and I know they're gonna go for a 2S round start, or if I'm gonna guess that they're gonna go for 2S round start, I'm gonna go for that option. And because I get that knockdown, I might be able to steamroll the game and win in the spot. Next, we're gonna be talking about how to find weaknesses or answers to common block strings. So I'm gonna record a gold list block string. We're gonna do close slash and overhead into 268 into 684. First thing we wanna do as the defender is find out where the gaps are. Where can we challenge? So let's press play and try to match the different parts. All right, so from close slash to that overhead, it is most definitely a frame trap. We don't wanna match there. 
Oh, but we can mash after blocking the overhead if they go into 268. And it looks like the final 268 into 684 Behemoth is gapless, so it doesn't matter if we press anything. Next, we want to see how our universal defensive options affects the block strain. So let's do it again, but this time we'll FD. And by the looks of it, if we just FD, the two follow behemoths are completely fake. Now let's try to backdash and see where that goes. Well, it doesn't look like we can backdash. What if we FD then backdash? Make a little more space for us. Ah, it's a free way out. By using mashes and our universal defensive options, FD and backdash, we're able to find very clear weaknesses to this block string. Next, we're going to be talking about using our character's gimmicks to shut down another character's game plan. As we all know, Mei is a fan of Totsugeki and then backdashing and resetting pressure, not really giving you an option to challenge. So let's show what that would look like. Mei might go into far slash, into fast dolphin, into backdash, and then from there they would jump forward and retake a turn. Let's see what that would normally look like if I challenge with a big button. So, although she's minus, I can't really do anything to punish her. But Gold Lewis has a very specific option. I can actually use 684 to catch that backdash, as well as catch her mashing. This is a form of counterplay that Gold Lewis and only Gold Lewis can partake in. And finally, we're going to be talking about how to practice blocking in training mode. You press start, you go to training settings, and you scroll down to recording settings. You have five different slots to work with and you can set them to random. And then down here, you can change how often they repeat. Generally, if you wanted to really go try hard on this, you would set five different options that are playing it randomly and it would be very difficult to block. But for the sake of this, we're just gonna do two. In our first recording, we're gonna record this. We have a low after the overhead. And in our second recording, record this. Going for the cross up. Now that we have both recordings saved, we're gonna go over here, play after reset and let the games begin, I suppose. Let's go to random. And now we're gonna block low and try to react to the, to the cross up with row. Step one is blocking though. Oh, there I got hit by the low. So I got to go directly from that overhead into a low. There we go. That time we went low and then reacted to the cross up with the throw. And by the looks of it, I'm getting better at it. When you're done labbing, you press star, you go to training settings, disable it, and you can delete your recordings or save them for later. Of course, you're only going to be able to practice what you record, but it goes a long way. And if you do this over time, you're going to build a lot of muscle memory to correctly block people's pressure. And finally, we're going to be talking about how to improve and master your character. It's important that you don't just skip to this step. You need to be comfortable with your character's tools before you pursue this. First, we're going to talk about doing advanced block strings that account for opponent's defensive options. Earlier we showed that Gold Lewis was very weak to FD and backdash, and the more you play your character, the more you know your own character's weaknesses. So, you find the weakness that other people are exploiting, you find out, okay, well people are backdashing here, people are jumping out here. The number two, you go to training mode, and you try to find out specific solutions to these problems by going to your counterattack settings and changing what the opponent does after block and after hit, and finding an appropriate counter. So first, let's show that block string from earlier. And we do, in fact, have a very large gap for the opponent that uh, allows them to FD and backdash. So let's try to figure out some options. Number one, can I just throw out a normal? Doesn't even look like I can run up and throw a normal. Fortunately, I've already labbed this on myself, so I can tell you the answer. Number one, I can Gatling to punish a backdash. Number two, I can chase with JD and just take a turn. Number three, I can actually micro dash into 624. These are options that you're going to have to find out on your own. The next step to mastering our character is learning our Okazemi, otherwise known as Oki. Oki is pretty much the way to enforce your pressure after a knockdown. A basic way to do this 
is by learning a safe jump and a meaty timing. We can go to after recovery and we can set our lay or soul to do the fast DP. And then we can also set them to do their fastest button. Actually, in this case, everyone's fastest button is a wig of throw. First, let's try to do a safe jump after a knockdown. This is going to be a character specific thing. Don't try to do this unless you're playing Gold Lewis. Great. So we did a meaty option that also beat a DP because we we're able to block in time. Now let's try to do the same thing and make sure that it hits as meaty. Oh, we actually slightly messed it up that time. Great. We did it. Simultaneously, we should be able to do these things off any kind of knockdown. So I'll do a safe jump media off that. I'll do a safe jump cross of media off that. And if I ever get any random knockdown, I should be able to run up and do a button on time so that I don't get wake up thrown. If you're even a little bit late, like we'll do right here, you can get wake up thrown or they can press the button. So you want to make sure that you're on top of your game when it comes to this. Next, we're going to be talking about advanced mix ups. Generally, you can find these by looking up tech on Twitter. You can look up the individual hashtags for your character. You can watch your favorite streamers and emulate what they do. So I'm going to show you guys some stuff that I do with Gold Lewis. Number one, we got a safe jump same side. We also have a safe jump that's cross up. From a hit like this, we can go cross for same side. It's not going to be a safe jump though. Cross up. And same side. Next, we're going to be talking about rotating your options. This is very important when trying to master your character. You need to be so familiar with all of your block strings and what they beat that you're able to do them when your opponent is showing that they have a habit of doing the thing you know how to punish. So if I knew that my opponent liked to backdash after blocking a behemoth, I would specifically go into like a JD. I would specifically go into like a Gatling. I would specifically go into a run up 2S. If my opponent is showing that they like to mash, now I'm going into more frame trap options. If my opponent showed that they were now respecting those block strings, they were no longer going for back dashes, I would now go for more staggers. Use my plus frames to just stay in. And finally, when you're mastering your characters, this is the fun part, we get to learn our advanced combos. These are going to be a lot of the stuff that you saw at the beginning of this video. But as important as damaging combos, you need to learn how to follow up rare hits. And that's all I've got. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the links in the description, the Twitch, the Patreon, the Twitter. Most importantly, the community Discord. Anyways, that's all I've got. Until next time. Bye-bye.